lot of people think that it's not possible to know if a company is toxic until you start the job. And no, 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 no. Okay, so this is major, a major key. A major, major key. Because... <laughs> Welcome back to my channel where I teach high achievers how to land new jobs they love at companies they love. And in today's video, let's talk about how to avoid toxic work environments before you even start the job. I'm gonna be sharing with you my top tips that are gonna help you put on your investigator hat in your job search so that you can avoid a toxic work environment before you even start the job. Because if you ever worked in a toxic work environment, you know it definitely can be miserable. And let's first start off with a pop quiz. Tell me, does this sound like you? Do you see job descriptions, skim them, and then think to yourself, you know what, I can make this work. And then suddenly, in the rare case, get an interview, and before you know it, you're like, what is that company called? And you're searching the internet, trying to figure out what the company is about to prepare for that interview. If I just described your life, then you need to stop doing that too day, okay? Instead of just skimming job descriptions, saying to yourself you can make it work and applying and hoping for the best, I want you to do something else. I want you to start reading between the lines. Before you apply for a job, you need to start reading between the lines to ensure that the role and the company align with what you want to do next. You need to analyze the job description, review their website to see if it's a website that you'd even be proud to show your friends and family. You need to get a better understanding of what they do, who they serve, and just get a good understanding of what you'd be walking into if you can only go off of just what you see online. All the while, while you're doing your research, you should be asking yourself, does this align with my career goals? If you had to accept the job just from reading the job description, looking at their website and doing your research, would this type of opportunity align with what you want, your values, your goals, the type of people you wanna be around? That's what you should be asking yourself before you even apply for the job. Next, when you go into interviews, you need to start asking the right type of questions. And let me explain what that means. If you're showing up to interviews like, pick me, pick me, I hope they pick me, I hope they give me a chance, then you're definitely doing it wrong. And if you're showing up to your interviews with 37 questions to grill the interviewer because you had a terrible work experience in the past and you don't want it to happen again, then you're also doing it wrong. There is a middle ground, and that middle ground is exactly where you should be when it comes to asking the right type of questions in your interviews. Your goal should be to gracefully interview the interviewer while also showing up confidently to show them that you're the right person for the job as well. It is a two-way street. But there's a certain way you wanna ask questions to help you get the best type of answer. And the best way to do that is to avoid leading questions. Leading questions are questions that subtly hit at the type of answer that you're looking for in the question. The problem with leading questions is that when you ask certain questions that hit at what you're looking for the answer to be, it can be very tempting for the employer to answer that question in a way that pleases you, even if that answer isn't 100% true. Especially if you're positioning yourself to be a top candidate who could be useful in the position, they may be tempted to say something that isn't gonna actually be the case when you start the job. So for example, in my it might sound good to say, how often do employees leave the office at 5 p.m.? But if you're asking that question, you're telling the interviewer that you would like to leave work by 5 p.m. and is that gonna be possible? And because you've already hinted that that's what you are looking for, they could be more inclined to say, oh, employees leave the office at 5 p.m. all the time, which might not be the case. But because you told them what you're looking for in your question, they know how to answer it. But a better question that's gonna give you a more honest response is asking if work-life balance is embraced here. If so, how? Could you give me a few examples of how you all embrace work-life balance here? I'd love to know. This question allows the interviewer to answer freely and allows you the opportunity to get the information you need to decide if this is the right type of environment for you. You wanna ask questions that allow them to be honest and that allow you to decide if that's what you are looking for in your career without any misleading information. Another thing you can do is connect with employees who already work there. 
And so when I say connect, I don't mean hit the connect button on LinkedIn and hope for the best. I mean actually connect with them in real life. Reach out for a quick conversation on the phone or on Zoom, or if you're able to meet in person, then you definitely can do that as well. I love this because reaching out to employees who work at the company you're interested in, who aren't the hiring manager, who aren't HR, who aren't your potential manager, allows you to get a candid understanding of the company you'll be walking into. You're able to ask the nitty gritty that you really wanna learn about, and you're able to get the unfiltered information that you you need to decide if the company is right for you. And on the plus side, if the company is right for you, then you'll have an amazing new contact that you can connect with if you choose to start at that company. A pro tip is that if reaching out to current employees feels weird or awkward, you can also reach out to former employees and they can still offer an authentic perspective on what it will be like to work at that company. The great thing is that LinkedIn can help you sift through current and former employees to help you decide who's the best person for you to connect with. Next, you want to pay attention to actions and not words. Okay, so this is major, a major key a major, major key. Because a lot of times when you're asking questions in interviews, or even when you're networking with people, you pay attention to their words and say, oh, well, so-and-so said this, or this is what they said in the interview. But you often miss the cues that tell you that their words mean otherwise. You wanna be sure that you're listening and paying attention to body language, pauses, cues, lookaways, hesitations, and anything else that would show you that maybe that what they're saying might not be 100% accurate. For example, if you ask an interviewer, what do you love most about working at this company? And they say, um, that's a great question. Um, so <laughs> if they pause, if they seem awkward, if they don't even know what they really love about that company, even if they go on to say something else that sounds good, just the fact that they paused, they were awkward, they maybe looked away, felt uncomfortable, that's a good cue that maybe they're not as happy in that position or at that company as you may think that they may be. Another thing you wanna do here, and this is where so many people miss the mark, and it's you want to be patient, not desperate. Yes, I said it. I said it. I know it's not what you want to hear today, but I have to tell you the truth. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I know when you're ready for a new job like yesterday, it can be so hard not to become desperate. But when you're desperate to land a job, it's so much easier to miss the red flags that are right in front of you. You're so much less likely to take the much needed time to really decide if the opportunity in front of you is the right fit for you. My recommendation when it comes to job searching is take the scenic route. When you take the time to be intentional and patient about your next opportunity, even when it's hard, it allows you to pay more attention to the red flags when they come up and allows you to make the right adjustments when they occur. And if you want even more tips on how to land a new job you'll love, how to get a new job without the same problems you're experiencing right now, then you're definitely going to want to grab my free guide on how to go from zero interviews to dream job offers. In that guide, I'm walking you through my five proven steps that are going to help you start to see how to tackle your job search so that you just don't avoid a toxic work environment, but you actually go to a job that excites you, that's fulfilling, and that's exactly where you want to be next in your career. If that sounds like exactly what you need, go ahead and grab it. The link is below and I'm confident it'll help you start to see how you can actually take your career to the next level with a new job you'll love. And if you want to cut straight to it and learn how to work with me, there's also going to be a link below to learn more about my career defined coaching program and how it can help you personally take your job search to the next level and land a new position you will love. And while you're still here, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell if you enjoyed this video and go ahead and like this video and comment. Let me know which one of these tips are you going to be implementing to help you avoid a toxic work environment in the future.